I'm going to welcome onto the stage Vincenzo Romano. He's the marketing expert at VincenzoRomano.com and business development for Plumia.com marketing agency in Italy. Vincenzo, welcome. Thank you. Hello, uh, good morning, bonjour, and first I saw earlier people uh, that were struggling a bit with the uh, French uh, speeches, so I want to assure you all that even if I'm Italian, my speech will not be in Italian, okay? There will be a lot of accent, I can do a lot about it, but uh, let me play the presentation. Okay. So, uh, I would love to skip the part where I introduce myself. I had a great introduction. So let's go into the, the topic. What do we have here? Entrepreneurship, culture in the digital age, a new paradigm for the economy. I wanted to tell you all that this one is not the real title. This is the title that you all saw in the uh, social media, in the website, in the other marketing material, but this is the boring title. It's like, you know, when you, it's business, so people expect you to be a little bit, you know, boring. This is the cool title. The Survivalist Entrepreneur Guide. How cool is this? So now that I have the proper title, I can say good morning again to you. Bonjour. And since there is a great majority of Congolese people, mbote. <laughs> uh, please keep in mind this word, survivalist. It's going to be very, very important. Uh, for what I want to talk about. Today I want to make you join a little nice journey on what is going to be the business world in the next future. And it's actually what is already, because it's already happening. All the things that I'm going to talk about are already happening. Some of them is already past. But we are behaving and sitting there as they are not happening. So, there's no conference, magazine, company, business conference, uh, corporate, that doesn't use one of those three keywords. Everyone is talking about job creation, distribution of wealth, and growth. Uh, my previous speaker was great, Latasha. She said a lot of things which I align with totally, even if I just met her this morning. Uh, so let's imagine making a conference like this, avoiding this word of what we're going to talk about the weather, not even my hairstyle, there's nothing to talk about. So, job creation, wealth, growth, how an individual can be part of it. Because when we talk about it, we always wait for something coming from the heaven. There's no job. Let's wait for the government to create job. Uh, the wealth is not well dis distributed. There is a lot of inequality. There is a lot of underprivileged people. Oh, let's wait for the government to do something. Uh, the country is not growing. It's the government fault. Really? That's all we can do. There's something that happens everywhere in the world. Even in the most rich and developed country, people complain and expect the government doing things. So how? an individual can change this. We have a model that it was meant to lead all of us in our life journey. We all learn since our childhood that we had to get a good education, to get a good job, and get a good retirement. This doesn't work anymore. It's not working anymore. It's already not working. First, somewhere in the world, the population is too old. There are too many old people to pay the, the retirement. The welfare is not sustainable. Somewhere else, the population is too young and there is not enough job for young people. <laughs> Nations, every nation, even the richest nation like Japan or United States, they've hiked debt, they have recession, they have to cut on welfare. So they're not there, so they won't create any job for us. And worse than worse, automation, artificial intelligence, and robots will cause the, cause the 50% of job loss by 2030. And you say, okay, just say 2030, so just forget it. No, it's already happening. We are already losing a lot of jobs by 
automation, artificial intelligence, and robot. And it's not that we have to do like somebody did in England after the first industrial revolution, they were burning machines. The first industrial machines that were working with steam, they were barred by someone because they were losing their job. But for example, in my industry, which is digital marketing, in the past there was a lot of company hiring social media uh, managers, community manager. Now the demand has decreased. Why? Because we are robots. We have now the hype in digital marketing is chat bots. You are chatting on Facebook with someone and it's not a human, it's a software. So I have to pay a human. It's the software is there 24 7, Christmas. New hand, it never, it never gets drunk, it never gets sick. So we are already losing job. And we can't just say, okay, let's wait for the government to make a law to forbid robots or to forbid Uber, which <laughs> everywhere in the world people doesn't like Uber. Taxi drivers think that Uber is gonna steal their job. It's not that someone is stealing your job. It's that you are not adapting fast enough. And by the way, with all the situation, Leaving your country, leaving our countries, it can't be a solution. Leaving a country because it's becoming poorer, it's just going to make the country poorer because you're going to the private country for the most important capital, the human capital. There's a funny story about this serious topic. You know, a friend of mine some time ago was reflecting about the movement of immigration that goes always from south to north. So, for example, people from Africa goes north, which is Europe. Where they land, they land to southern Europe, Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal. Northern Europe, it's poor compared to northern Europe. So, we from southern Europe, we move to north, and we go to northern Europe and England. So, the friend of mine said, I feel so sorry for British people. Say, why? Because if they try to move north, they only found pieces of ice floating in the, in the sea. So, where they can move? So, moving... It's not a solution. What is the solution? To make people stay in the countries, you need to create in the country a proper environment for them to stay. But who is going to create the proper environment? People. So if we don't start empowering people and teaching them that they can't wait for someone to hire them, but they have to create the job, things will never change. So what if we start creating more entrepreneurs and less employees. And what if we realize that being an entrepreneur is a matter of survival? That's why I say they're survivalist. Because no one has a job secured in 2017. No one will have a job secured in 2020. And the more we go in the future, the less jobs will be stable. So let's start. This is the chapter one. There are only two chapters, don't get scared. Eh? All the things that your mom always told you to not do, which the first one, never be an entrepreneur. I know, I feel there, I know that here there are students. Who's a student? Who's a teacher? We don't have teachers. Okay, one teacher. Who has a startup? Okay. Uh, I promise that I'm going to mess with all of you equally. So if someone feels offended because I'm offending a category, don't worry, I'm gonna offend some other category one second, just one second after. So just see what we are always told to not do. If you go on the street and you are a student or a teacher, or you already have your business, or you already have your job, and you say, I want to start a new business, what you find is people trying to pull you down. And it's not because people, it's mean, it's not because people are jealous. It's not because people doesn't like you or doesn't love you enough. But it's because our culture is meant to be scared. We are scared to be independent. We are scared to create and build. We want to have someone to refer and also to blame for our mistakes. What do they, do they tell you? I, I built my job by myself, alone. I finished university, I just took the first degree in communication, I said I won't study further because I see that I'm not learning. I go on the street and I learn how to work. And everyone was telling me, you can't, because being an entrepreneur is so risky. Why you, you don't just start being an employee? It's safer. So by the time you learn, you save some money, you know you're safe and then you have time to build your stuff. 
Another thing that they tell you is, oh, but how can everyone be an entrepreneur? Who is going to work? Who's going to hire others if everyone is an entrepreneur? Uh, or they tell you, oh, who do you think you are? Are you comparing yourself with people like Steve Jobs, Max Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Richard Branson, whatever? Or they also tell you, but you don't have enough education. You didn't study enough. You, you don't have, you're not a specialist in something. So what are we going to answer to those people? Risk. When they talk about risk in 2017, they don't know what they are talking about. They don't know. Being an employee, saying that there's no job secure now, has risk. Your company can close. You can be paid late. You can be fired. If you're in corporate, it's even worse. Because being in corporate, it's similar as being an entrepreneur. Because climbing the corporate ladder has its cost. You have to buy good clothes. You have to drive a new car. You have to have good accessories. You have to go to certain places to meet people like you or like you want to become. But after you spend so much in image, you are not sure that your boss is going to raise you. You're not sure you're going to get the promotion that you were working and paying so hard to get. So you have, call, you have risk. Why no one tells you that being in corporate has a risk? No one ever told, tell this. I never heard anyone saying this. They said, no, 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 just get a good, a good degree and go try to find a job in corporate because there's no risk. I see a lot of risk. And in the meantime, you are giving your time. You are giving away your time. Most probably the best time of your life when you are young, when you are strong, when you are healthy, and you can struggle a little bit more to build something yours. An example of this is that a lot of uh, famous entrepreneurs that we know, uh, for example, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, they never looked corporate. They don't look corporate now, but they didn't before. Steve Jobs, the same. They always were themselves. They built the rule that they want to play. They built the game, and now they are leading the game. Well, except it's Steve Jobs because of that. But you see that you don't have to become like someone else tells you in order to get a job, to build your prosperity, to build your wealth. First, you need to know who you are and what you want to do. That's how sometimes if you see a corporate leader and a new business owner, like it can be a Mark Zuckerberg, maybe the corporate leader has more prestige, has more position, has more stability but it doesn't live good as Mark Zuckerberg because he's not the owner of his time, of her time. And when you don't own your time, you don't own nothing because it's all we have. Second negative, discouraging thought. You can't imagine a society with a lot of entrepreneurs because if, if, if everywhere it's full of entrepreneurs, no one will be working for someone else. This is a little bit stupid. Honestly, sorry for the strong word, but that's it's because our culture. We all learn that we must hire or be hired, follow or be followed. You need to climb and pull people behind us and let them down because we need to be the first. That's why we think that being an employee means being such a competitive, aggressive machine that can't collaborate with others. But if we see the entire world and the way we are doing things, it's pretty bad because of this mindset. So what if, if we imagine a world where a lot of minds collaborate, where they try to cooperate to build something better for themselves, for their country, for their people. Cooperation is the key, not competition. Third, who do you think you are? You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be in, you have a startup in digital, uh, you, you are an internet uh, person, but who you think you are? Do you think that you can become like Mark Zuckerberg? Or do you think that you can go uh, to a meeting dressed like this? Why don't you wear, where is your suit, where is your tie, where is your corporate look, where is it? I don't need it. But you are not. The thing is, if you want to become a great football player, you choose as model Pele, Maradona, Ronaldo. You choose the best performing players on the field. 
if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to choose the best performing players in the field. If you don't have a high role model, you will never succeed. You will remain in the average or even lower. There's this anonymous quotation that I love. They say, aim for the sun. Because if you fail halfway, you will still land on the moon, which is pretty high. But if, I, if my aim is from here to him and I fail halfway, I didn't move. I just remain where I am. But if I aim to go walking under Durban, even if I fell halfway, I walked a lot. You don't have the proper education. You can't be in business, you can be uh, an entrepreneur because you didn't study enough, because you don't have the specific education that will teach you how to do things. Common sense is a perfect answer to this. We all know people, maybe they are our friends or our grandparents or our parents, that they made it, they became successful entrepreneurs without education, without contact, starting from the street, without having an office or not even a home. So if they made it, why we tell young people in a safer environment that they can't? And this is a very funny story. This man, I don't know if you know about him, Matthew Stewart from the United States. He's a philosopher, a philosopher. He has his only a degree in philosophy and a PhD in philosophy. After his first degree in philosophy, he took a three weeks, three, only three weeks, uh, management and finances course. Before taking this, he didn't even know how the stock market worked. In a matter of months, he became one of the top United States management and financial advisor, making millions without knowing about, without knowing nothing about what he was doing. And he wrote this book, which is a very nice book to read, The Myth of Management, where he says, they were hiring me just because observing them, I learned how they behave. I learned how to dress like them, how to talk like them, uh, if I had to say uh, we need to improve this, I would say we have to maximize. If we need to say uh, I have something, I don't say I have, I have, this is an asset of mine. I say, oh wow, there's an expert, there's an expert. And he claims that all this obsession that we have now on experts in any field, it's because we are really scared about economy, because honestly, we think that economy is a science as, or business is a science as uh, chemistry or physics or uh, medicine, but it's not. Because the gravity to build a bridge will always be the same. It was the same 10,000 of years ago, will be the same in the future. So I can learn from someone else how to, how to build a bridge. Atoms, oxygen is the same, it won't change. Oxygen is the same in Africa, it's the same in Europe, it's the same. An atom of oxygen is always an atom of oxygen. If a doctor needs to, cut, to, to, uh, to close my wounds because I'm bleeding, it's the same, it won't change. But economy is about human behavior. How can we think that drawing some graph and teaching to some young student graphs and formulas and, and, and numbers, they can be able to predict human behavior? They can, that's why 2008, the global financial crisis, no one predicted. Just a few small number of experts say something bad is gonna happen. But the majority, the good ones say, no, no, all is going fine, all is going to be fine. Same thing happening in the year 2000 with the new economy bubble burst. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so nice, the new economy, failure. But after the thing happens, then they sit on the talk show TV and say, yeah, we know why the economic crisis happened. Yeah, we can explain you for six hours a day why the economic crisis happened. Why didn't predict it before? Why didn't tell it before? This is like the story of the girl that went to a gypsy that could tell the future. So she sits there and say, can you read the future from my hand? And the gypsy say, yeah, I see the spirit of your dad protecting you on your shoulders. And the girl said, but my dad is still alive. Has your mother if she cheated? Ask your mother if you cheated on him. That's what they do. That's what they do. No, nothing bad is going to happen. It happened. We knew it was going to happen. So proper education. Why we need all these years and years of specializations? And then we can't predict. Because 
Business is not something that you can learn from a book. It's not something that you can learn. And Richard Branson says perfectly. He never followed a, a normal, formal education. When he was in his uh, high school, he, he founded his first magazine, which was his first successful business. No one knows it. Usually we all think about Virgin Music, but his first successful business was a quite popular magazine for teenagers in Britain. And when he started this venture, uh, people in his school, teachers, were saying to him, you are crazy. I think that if or either you become successful or you will finish in jail. There's no option halfway. <laughs> And that's what he did. And also, he struggled a lot to learn because he suffered of dyslexia. He can't learn or read properly. So imagine. And he said, becoming an entrepreneur is something which people have to learn just from getting out there and have to learn the art of survival. Now, after I exposed briefly all the negative thoughts that blocks us from try to build something new to become entrepreneurs. Let's talk about what modern entrepreneur does, because a lot of us is doing it wrong. It's not that, oh, I'm young, I have no internet, so I'll be successful. A lot of us still doesn't know what to do. That's why, unfortunately, majority of startups fail. Majority of startups fail. And not because they don't have the degree or PhD. But because there is a problem in my generation and in the, all the generation close to mine, I'm part of the generation called millennials. Uh, the others that are born after the year 2000, they are called Generation Z, as uh, Latasha mentioned too. So with our two generations, we have a problem caused by the world we live that makes an entrepreneur becoming a entrepreneur, someone that wants to be an entrepreneur in his mind, but it's so focused in this hype marketing of the startup that tells us how cool is the life of uh, Mark Zuckerberg, but no one is telling us how we get it. So we just become entrepreneur on our Facebook selfies, uh, we go to meetings for networking, we go to those nice dinners in, when we meet other creative people, uh, we go to find investors, we go to find the next grant, uh, hoping that the government will give us some money. So we sit there and we talk about how oh, great is our, we're such, we, I have an idea that's gonna change the world. But after four years, nothing changed, only the idea. Example of an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur has an idea today, after one month or some month, he gets a business. A one entrepreneur has an idea today, after one month, we'll have an idea. The one entrepreneur is the one that spent the first month to define a logo and a brand. A real entrepreneur is the one that gets out of his place and goes to find customers. There are identified five things to avoid to not be a one entrepreneur or stop being one, if you are, because I was one of them. I'm guilty. The first one is information of a lot. The second one is confusing networking with leisure. The third one is the so-called snack culture. The fourth is lack of discipline. The fifth is expecting money from ideas. And there's a bonus tip. Avoid saying this, because even if you do everything right and you say this, you are still a entrepreneur. I didn't choose the entrepreneur life. The entrepreneur life chose me. Information overload. I don't know if you realize that today we are going to produce and upload on the internet more information than the entire humankind produced in all the history before today, and tomorrow is going to be the same and the same the day after. There is so much information. We are surrounded by stimulation. Our brain is always, what is this, what is this, what is this, what is this, what is this? And it's, it's thrilling, it's exciting. All this uh, easy access to information and entertainment uh, causes to our brain an adrenaline rush. And when the brain has an adrenaline rush, it wants more. So the less we focus on something and the more we keep browsing here and doing this and doing this, the more we want. 
And worse, when we are not doing this, we have like this, this addiction crisis that is called the fear of missing out. If we don't connect uh, ourselves on the internet once a day, we think that we miss some important news, uh, we miss some uh, funny meme that everyone is laughing about and, and we, we don't know what is happening. We miss the, the update of our best friends. We need to know where our best friend is going to have dinner tonight. If not, we are not going to sleep. We miss the, the tool that is going to make our website more productive. We miss the new app that is going to wake up us and making the coffee from our phone directly. We think that we always miss something. There is something so important that we need to know right now on our phones. The 90% of this is not a priority. I mean, this world, it's very cool. It's a great time to be alive. But wasting all this mind resources and space. I mean, our brain has less energy than our computer because our computer is always plugged to the electricity. Our brain needs to rest at least nine, eight hours and five, 50 minutes every 30 minutes. So we can't keep this focus and attention for so long. Multitasking, and it's scientifically proven, it's reducing the IQ in new generation. So instead of being tools to make people smarter, I'm making people more stupid are zombifying people. So using those tools needs to have a lot of self-control, discipline. That's how people that have an entrepreneur idea, they become one entrepreneur because they, they keep browsing online and read what this person wrote, what this person did, what is the next cool event, and they keep talking about ideas, 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 but they never go outside and work. Networking is not a game. So we say we all use social networks. They're amazing tools for networking, for project management, for lead generation, for communication with client, customer cares, and the name itself say network. So they are meant to create and grow a network, but they are also meant to be fun. They are structured carefully. There were studies behind them to create the same experience that we have when we gamble, when we play a slot machine or a roulette or we play poker. They are meant for this. Imagine that next week I read an article that shocked me a lot. It was, the title was, Your Brain Can Be Ejected. And it was written by people from social networks. The, word, the person who invented the Facebook like, the person who invented the Facebook notification, and the person who invented the tap down to update. You know that every app now, if you want to see the new content, you have to tap down. This three person regret what they did. And they are all restricting themselves on social media and they say what we had in mind wasn't that, but someone took control and now we make things addictive. They say, for example, that the tap down is not necessary enough. App are totally able with our technology to update themselves automatically, but they found out that people love to tap down and see an update that they keep it because it's so addictive. You see people tapping down every five minutes. Let's see what's new. Let's see what's new. Let's see what you the app not, doesn't need it, but we love it. Our brain loves it. There is nothing wrong and nothing bad in using a tool that can be very useful for you and also be fun in the meantime. There's nothing wrong. It's amazing. But what happens if we make this networking becomes something without a purpose? and we start using it only for fun, it's using ourselves with the business and work and networking, because this is what we do. And that's why every highly su successful people in digital and technology uh, often set limited times for day for social media, for emails. I, I am a great follower of Tim Ferriss, I don't know if you know him. He has a podcast where he interview every week uh, top performers in any field, in any industry, athletes, business person, they all restrict the use of social media and email. There is one of the greatest entrepreneurs and one of the greatest genius of his time, where it's, I want an applause for him because he's Elon Musk and he's South African. Don't you want to make an applause for Elon Musk? <laughs> He was one of the inventors of PayPal. Uh, now he's in uh, Tesla Motor, which he makes luxury cars that works with electricity. He's, he's changing the game in uh, space industry. He wants to send people on Mars very soon. He's a genius. And what he does is set time for everything. For him, he said that he's one of the busiest person in the world, 
but it says that it only checks on email 15 minutes in the morning. That's it. And it reads 200 books in a month. <laughs> Snack culture, talking about reading, talking about reading, when we keep browsing the web, we think that we are learning something. There are all those pages packed with information and short posts and images that teach us something. You know what happened there? Three lines. A short video, 20 seconds, that shows you how to unzip uh, a zip tie from your arm. Oh, this is very useful information. If someone kidnapped me one day, I can unzip a zip tie. We think that we are learning, and this is called snack culture. It's consuming information in a very short time frame, in a very simple form, and we keep consuming a lot of different information in a short time frame, which we don't learn, we don't memorize, we don't retain. But this is understandable because we all love snacks. Our tongue, our guts, they love snacking. Our brain loves snacking. But we all know the snacks are not healthy. <laughs> so if we think that we can stop reading books because we have the app that resume a book in, in 10 lines, we are wrong. We are just snacking on the book. We are not reading a book. And to be an entrepreneur, self-improvement is the key. Constantly learning, educating yourself. I don't want to be uh, misunderstood when I talk about education that at this moment is not sufficient in certain fields like business and entrepreneurship. It's not that I deny the value of education. I don't deny the value of academic education, but there are things that they happen faster than any university can make a lecture about it. By the time they write books, they make PhD, they make a lecture, it's already changed outside. Like I said, now in university they are teaching social media marketing in the things we were doing it three years ago. When they will start teaching about chatbot that we are using now, things will change in a different way. So I don't deny the value of education, but education must be something that you want to get, that you are ready to get, that you are ready to do for yourself, and you can't wait that just a piece of paper is going to give you access to the world. Lack of discipline. It's the biggest problem of the one entrepreneur. Everyone in the world that has an idea of business, if it's not uh, constant, if it doesn't keep he or she keep his or her words, if it's not efficient and effective in what or she, he or she does, it's never, 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 never someone that is going to succeed. Another example with Elon Musk, because I love him. He lived for a month spending only $30 in food. He was spending $1 a day in food, eating every day the same meal. You say, maybe because he was poor. No, he had money. He could. But he said, I want to test myself. I want to see if I'm able to do whatever I want. If I can discipline myself so much, then I can be an entrepreneur. But if I don't prove myself that I can restrict my own possibilities just for the sake of it, I will never be a successful person in business. So. When I tell this story, a lot of people tell me, yeah, no, but I did it too, because no, when, when, I was, when we were younger, my family was, was quite broke, or we were uh, migrating in another country, so I had to do it. That's the difference. You had to do it. Discipline is not when you, have to, when you don't have any other choice, when you don't have possibilities. It's not discipline. It's survival. It's adaptation. You have to. The discipline is when you cannot do it, but you do it. This is the difference. And this is what modern internet entrepreneurs fail to understand because it's amazing living in a world where it seems that everything is easier, free. Information is free. I can talk right now with a person in the other side of the world. We're just tapping on his name and immediately I'm connected. I'm like collapsing the time and space in just one tap. So it's amazing. You feel free. You feel limitless. But freedom is nothing without discipline. Because if freedom becomes mindless wandering, you will never enjoy the freedom and the possibility that it gives to you. You can only be wandering around. Discipline sounds like a very bad word in our society. We all talk about, I'm pursuing happiness, I'm pursuing freedom, I'm looking for uh, happiness and freedom. If you say discipline, what did you say? You say discipline. 
It's, it's worse than swearing. If I say a swear word, they laugh. If I say discipline, no, discipline, he can't. But in fact, if we are disciplined, we get things done. And the more things we do, the more we can enjoy our free time. That's how it works. There's no way to change it. Ideas don't make money. I'm sure they hear that some student, and some uh, future entrepreneur and startup that he just started, and he's in the same place where I was before. It's saying, I have an idea, it's gonna make me so rich. I have an idea, it's gonna change the world. Ideas don't change the world, ideas don't make money. Ideas sitting on your laptop, on a piece of paper, uh, go around with NDA and tell people, sign my NDA so I can tell you about my great idea. They don't work. First, the idea without execution is that. Second, the circulation of ideas is unstoppable. As I just said, we live in a world where anyone can reach any information in a second. And it's impossible thinking that among billions of people, someone else didn't have my same idea or an idea that is similar to mine but better than mine or that when I finally go on the market, someone else will do the same I did but faster, cheaper, with a better marketing, better sales, better service. So there's no sense in keeping this cult of ideas and thinking that ideas are gonna make us rich and gonna give us money and, and, and success and change the world. What makes money, what change the world, it's a lot of smart work. With ideas, yes, but with a lot of smart and hard work. Right, this is just a little bit of humor. Final word, I'm done. <laughs> In order to be a survivalist entrepreneur, a new leader ready to improve the world and face the challenges of the future needs to follow 10 rules. Improve yourself. Self-education, self-improvement, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally is important. The quality of your life, it's very important. Read, for real, I already said. Never worry about what others will think about you. When someone comes to you and tells you, ah, oh, who do you think you are? Who do you think you can become like the next Bill Gates? No, don't worry about it. Don't mind them. Five, be ready to fall and stand up more than two times. And here, actually, I forgot something. When I say fall and stand up more than two times, I mean a month, not in a lifetime. Connect with other generations to learn lessons from the past and avoid mistakes already done. We can deny the wisdom of our parents, of our uncles, of our grandparents, of someone that did things before us in the way they were doing things in that time. Let's learn from them. Let's learn from history, but also learn how to not do the same mistake. Same, filter what the present and the future are offering to you. New or trendy doesn't mean they should be better or useful. Eight, find good role models, but never worship anyone. Humans are humans. Someone can be a good inspiration for business, but a terrible person in life. So never worship any other human. Learn what you can learn. Nine, cooperate, collaborate, help. And most important, keep on smiling. Okay, so just a bit of advertising. Uh, all the material that I used for this uh, short speeches and presentation is going to be a free short ebook that I'm going to launch the next week. So if anyone wants it, you're free to send me an email and ask for it or check on my website. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Vincenzo, Vincenzo Romano. I'm from Italy. Uh, I'm a marketing advisor. I'm here because I was one of the speakers of this event. So my expectation for the night is to keep connecting with the amazing people that I meet here, uh, keep creating this amazing uh, relationship that I'm, I'm creating with the people that organize the event and the other uh, guests, and all for Africa.